Hi everyone, yes, Carlos Sirzate to another episode of Dimitra's Dishes. We're gonna make a heartwarming soup today. I'm gonna to show you how to make my version of chicken pot pie soup. Everyone loves chicken pot pie with that flaky puff pastry top. But today we're just gonna be making the soup version and I'm gonna make some puff pastry twists, some Parmesan puff pastry twists to serve alongside this. It's gonna be so delicious, a perfect meal for any weeknight, but it's also really nice if you're throwing a nice dinner party or you wanna call some friends over, make a big pot of this, let's get started. So we're gonna start with the chicken. I have about one and a half pounds of boneless, skinless chicken thigh meat. I love boneless, skinless chicken thigh meat because it stays juicy, but if you wanna use breast, be my guest and do that. And I also like to cook it in the air fryer. So I'm just gonna drizzle a little bit of olive oil on it, about two, three tablespoons and season both sides with salt and pepper, and in the air fryer basket it goes. It's gonna bake in the air fryer or fry in the air fryer at 400 degrees Fahrenheit for 15 minutes, and then I'm just gonna chop it up. If you don't wanna use the air fryer, if you don't have one, you can do this in the oven. Just preheat your oven to 425 degrees Fahrenheit and bake it in there for about 25 minutes. It doesn't even have to be fully cooked because we're gonna cook it further in the soup. So once it comes out, you can let it cool down a little bit because in the meantime, while the chicken is cooking, you wanna get your veggies ready. Go ahead and finally chop an onion and then uh, either two carrots or a handful of baby carrots. Go ahead and dice those up or slice them up along with two stalks of celery. If you don't like celery in your soup, you can use celery seeds, about a half to a teaspoon or so. We'll add all that celery flavor without the texture that celery has. I love it, but some people don't, so we give you options. Then I have three potatoes. You're gonna peel those and dice those up as well. You want fairly small pieces because in the soup you don't want giant pieces of potatoes in there. Have that all ready to go. Put the onion, carrot, and celery in a pot, in a soup pot, with about three to four tablespoons of olive oil, or if you wanna cook this in butter, you could put about half a stick of butter in here. It's gonna give you those Thanksgiving vibes. It's gonna taste and smell so good. Just cook the veggies in there with a little sprinkle of salt until they're nice and soft and golden. That's gonna take about 15 minutes. So once the veggies are done cooking, I've already grated four, you could do four or five garlic cloves. Just grate them really fine and put them in there and they're just gonna warm through until they're fragrant. It literally takes just a few seconds. You don't ever wanna overcook garlic because it'll burn. And then the thickener is gonna be three quarters of a cup of all-purpose flour. You wanna put that in there and just toast it up, maybe for about a minute or so. I'm also gonna add a heaping teaspoon of thyme. This is dried thyme. And then two quarts of chicken stock. The potatoes are gonna go in. I also like to add a cup of frozen green peas and frozen corn, but I didn't have, I just had the mixed veggies, so I just putting in a cup of frozen mixed vegetables. There's some green peas in there, some carrot, corn, and peas. Give that a nice mix. I'm also gonna season with a little more salt because potatoes do need salt. Some more black pepper. And then I'm gonna add the chicken in here. You could shred the chicken, um, finely chop the chicken like I'm doing, roughly chop it, however you like it. If you have leftover roasted turkey, this is a great way to use up a leftover turkey after a Thanksgiving meal. You can just make this soup. It doesn't have to be chicken pot pie. It could be turkey pot pie. And that's it, this is gonna to come to a boil, then I'm gonna reduce the heat to a medium, and I'm gonna let this boil for about 30 or 40 minutes or until the potatoes are fork tender and the soup is gonna thicken, it's gonna be really nice and thick and rich. Then I'm gonna go ahead and give it a taste and see if it needs some more seasoning. I also like to add a little splash of heavy whipping cream in the end, just to give it a little more richness, a ladle full or so, that's about a half a cup or so. But while the soup is cooking, I'm going to make the puff pastry twist. But before I do that, I'm gonna clean up. So while the soup is simmering, it's time to make the puff pastry twist. You're gonna to wanna to make sure that your oven is preheated to 400 degrees Fahrenheit. I use a whole pack of puff pastry, which has two sheets in it. It's about a pound, um, half a pound each sheet. So I just lay out the puff pastry sheets. You don't have to roll them out or anything like that. You want them to stay the thickness that they come in because then they'll puff up perfectly. Just cut them into about half inch strips and then brush them with butter. I melted two ounces of butter 
It might, you might need more or less. You can use olive oil if you prefer. And then I sprinkle a little bit of oregano on top. You could do thyme if you want. And then lots and lots of shredded Parmesan cheese. If you have Greek cheeses on hand, kefalothiri is a great one to use. And then I just take each one of the strips and I just twist them. I twist them all around and then once they're twisted I like to brush them with a little bit more butter and kind of roll them in the cheese that's on the counter or on your work surface and then I put them on two baking trays that are lined with parchment paper and they're going to bake for about 15 or 20 minutes or until they're nice and golden and crisp. That's really all you need to do for these. It doesn't get simpler than that. If you don't want to do them as twists, you could always cut them into little squares or rectangles, or if you want to get fancy, you can take out a cookie cutter and cut them in your favorite shape. And then you brush the tops again with butter and you sprinkle them with a generous amount of of cheese, uh, of course, Parmesan cheese or kefalothiri, and then your favorite herb, oregano or thyme or something like that. So simple, they go so good with the soup. The soup should be ready at this point because it only takes about 30, 40 minutes for the potatoes to be fork tender. It might take a little bit less. You're, you're gonna wanna go in and give it a taste and see if it needs some more seasoning. It should have thickened beautifully. I like to serve this with a little sprinkling of Parmesan cheese on top and then some of the puff pastry twists on the side or even inside the soup. They taste good when they absorb all of that delicious broth. Time for the taste test. And of course you could add some freshness to this by squeezing some lemon juice on top and even sprinkling some finely chopped parsley. Mm. So comforting, so delicious. This actually tastes like Thanksgiving in a bowl. And can you hear how crispy these are? Delicious, flaky, buttery, cheesy, perfection. If you want to print out the recipe, head on over to the website, www.dimitrosdishes.com. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. If you want to learn how to make the Greek chicken of the lemony chicken soup, click over here and I'll see you right over there. Yes, yes.